Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Senior leader at Thunder Bay Hospital removed following social media posts of Nazi imagery. Toronto detective stole drugs from criminal cases to treat his chronic pain. Oklahoma's ban on critical race theory met with opposition from civil rights groups. Woman vanishes in January, husband now charged. International community refutes attempts to charge Mexican scientists with organized crime. Amidst growing concerns about climate change, Vladimir Putin declines attending COP26 climate summit. Russia to host Taliban in Moscow. To begin, Keith Taylor, a former patient family advisor for Thunder Bay Regional Health Sciences Centre, has been removed from his position for violating the social media policy of the hospital. Specifically, in 2012, Keith featured over a dozen pictures of swastikas, a sculpture of Adolf Hitler, and a military badge and other objects on his Facebook page. He says that he was collecting these items to open a museum. Moreover, he apologized for the previous posts. However, some point out that these objects carry a moral obligation and should not be displayed with humor in the way that Keith displayed them. In other Canadian news, a Toronto homicide detective has confirmed that he obstructed justice by stealing drugs from two homicide cases. Both of these were active investigations. Additionally, over the period of about 18 months, Paul Warden, the homicide detective, stole from evidence lockers to treat his ongoing chronic pain. As a result, the Toronto Police Service has enhanced their security measures to include additional video surveillance. Over in Oklahoma, some educators and civil rights groups are challenging the state's recent law, which restricts schools from teaching about race and gender issues. They're taking these challenges to court with a lawsuit filed by the American Civil Liberties Union of Oklahoma. They highlight that the House Bill 1775 infringes on the educators' and students' First Amendment rights to become informed and to discuss racial and gendered issues in the school environment. Turning now to California, a man has been arrested on the grounds of suspicion for killing his wife. Maya Millett went missing early January. According to Larry Millett, his wife left voluntarily. However, she did not take her mobile phone, her valuables or her children. Since that time, Larry Millett has remained a person of interest. Additionally, Maya's last phone call before she vanished was with her divorce attorney. Maya is assumed to be dead and her family members as well as the authorities have urged the public to aid them in tracking down her remains. In other news, the Mexican government has accused 31 scientists and officials of organizing crime and money laundering. In response, the international academic community has backed the 31 individuals accused. Over 50 universities and societies have written letters and other publications against the prosecution these accusations come at a time when the scientific community in Mexico has been described feeling targeted by Lopez Obrador's administration. At this time, the judge has not granted an arrest warrant and has rejected the charges. However, the prosecution will be pushing forward with this case. Over in Russia, President Vladimir Putin will not be attending the COP26 climate summit in Glasgow. Previously, Putin has stated that he will take part in the climate summit. Additionally, the Kremlin spokesperson stated that addressing climate change is a major priority in Russia. However, Putin will not be flying to Glasgow for the summit, even though the 120 global leaders have confirmed that they will be attending. Additionally, the Kremlin spokesperson stated that addressing climate change is a major priority for Russia. However, Putin will not be flying to Glasgow for the summit, even though 120 global leaders have confirmed that they will attend. Lastly, Russia will host the Taliban in a series of talks in Moscow. Moscow has stated that they recognize the Taliban's efforts to stabilize the economic and political situation in Afghanistan. Officials from 10 countries are to participate in or to attend the conference. Countries include China, Pakistan, India, Iran and more. Meanwhile, the United States will not attend the conference and cited technical reasons for this. Russia has also stated that they will send humanitarian aid to Afghanistan and has urged the international community to mobilize the same support. 
However, despite the discussions and financial support, Russia has made it clear that they do not officially recognize the Taliban government. Moreover, they will not recognize them officially until the Taliban have met the promises they made when they took over the country. We expect a responsible behavior towards Afghan citizens first and foremost from the Western countries whose 20-year-long presence in Afghanistan brought about the current deplorable situation and did not in any way contribute to strengthening the industrial and economic sphere of Afghanistan. We believe that the West should not only provide traditional humanitarian assistance, but also assist to in paying uh, salaries to socially significant citizens of Afghanistan, including doctors, teachers, and so on. We believe that the central coordinating role in coordinating international efforts in Afghanistan should belong to the United Nations. I hope that the collective call of the country's members of the Moscow format that will be issued after today's meeting will be heard by the UN leadership and in the near future we will receive a favorable relevant response. On our part, we intend to send another shipment of humanitarian aid to the friendly Afghan people. That's all for today. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby. Like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications for our next episode.